You can't call your channel Anvil of Doom and not have painted an Anvil of Doom. So in this video, I do you all proud and I finally do it. I finally paint an Anvil of Doom. So let's get into it. Hey my dudes, welcome back to Anvil of Doom Miniatures. My name is Dietz and I finally did it. I finally got my hands on an Anvil of Doom. It took me so bloody long, but we finally got there. I was looking over eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and I found it for a really good price actually on eBay, surprisingly. Now this is one of my all-time favorite minis. There's just something about it that really gets me going. Now I would argue that Warhammer Fantasy Dwarfs have the most character out of any other army. Don't hate me for saying this. Even more than High Elves. They don't have dragons or beasts or anything like that. They have gyrocopters and big ass anvils and just use their brains instead of having these big monsters, which I find is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the flags, but let's get into it and let's start painting this guy. Now I received this thing with a nice thick coat of paint on it, so it needed a bath. I actually really liked the existing scheme that the person painted this previously in, as it was very close to the box art and I was gonna try to do something very similar. All the metal parts went in acetone and the plastic wheels went in some dead oil. The room priest I received had a bit of a wonky mold and the staff was broken, so I just decided to use my old room priest I painted a few months ago. I really didn't have time to go back through and try fix this thing, so I just wanted to move fast with this mini. After a quick squirt of white primer, we are off to the races. Now, I could see a few massive mold lines on the anvil. I did use a little bit of green stuff to fix it up here and there, but I didn't go too crazy because I didn't have too much time. As I always say, I'm not going for Golden Demon, so I just want to have some fun and carry on. Now, I applied gunmetal all over the anvil, covering the runes, being super careful not to get it anywhere I didn't want it. Then I applied a couple thin coats of gunmetal all over the dwarf statue and to the wheels. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat it, these wheels were the worst, so every time you see me in this video painting them, imagine me swearing and just being really upset. I don't know why they sucked, they just really sucked to paint. Next I added a nice coat of Gianna's gold to the anvil's lines, little handles, and the dwarf faces. Then I added some of this to the statue braces and the beard. I then added to the chassis sides and the dwarf face runes, and last up, the annoying little wheel spokes. Now Gianna's gold is my go-to for a base coat because it's a bit more rich and dark compared to other golds. So the box art has the anvil covered with plenty of green to the trim, so I wanted to keep it the same. I used the best green, goblin green, as the base coat for the chassis, wheels, and the raised areas on the main anvil, including the nice little pretty decorative parts on the side and the top. After that was all done, I made a dark green wash and applied it generously all over the goblin green areas. I made sure I went over the wheels a couple times just to give it that little bit of a pop. Sticking with the washes, I applied a good old coat of nylon oil all over the gun metal, being careful not to go over the gold or green parts. Now if you know the channel, you know I love a good wash and this is generally the part I enjoy about painting the most. I'm weird, I know, I get it. For the gold, I used Gullivan Flesh Wash, which was watered down a little bit, and I did a couple coats on the beard of the statue because it didn't feel like it was enough for me and I really wanted to bring that contrast out. So the front of the anvil has some really cool flames on it, and as I'm basing it off the box art, I wanted to give it the same look. So I threw down two thin coats orange flare as the base, then I slowly mixed in some uriel yellow and worked that towards the tips of the flame until I had pure uriel yellow. I then slowly mixed in some dawn yellow to the uriel yellow and applied that to the very tips and then did a small edge highlight. After this, I applied a couple coats of Sarah from Sepia Wash just to tie it all together. I was pretty happy how this turned out and I actually managed to do it pretty quickly. Like all of my true metallic metal, I go back over the null oil wash parts with a glaze of gun metal to all the raised areas. It's really important to take your time and not get it in the cracks, as you'll lose those shadows, the contrast, and even the runes. Once I'm happy with all of that, I'll add a final glaze of silver to the model, but this time I go over a smaller area. I find this technique works pretty well, and although it doesn't give you the best true metallic metal, it'll definitely give you a good tabletop standard paint job. Time for the golds, and I do a similar technique I did with the silver. I go back over with some Gianna's gold. Then, when I'm happy with that, I use Vallejo polished gold as a highlight. I try to go over the upward facing areas of this to emulate some light. And yep, I did this over all four of the wheels and it was extremely annoying, but I got there. And to tie it all together, I just use a nice silver highlight to some of the raised areas. This just gives it a little bit of a worn look. All right, so now we're on the home straight with the anvil and I mix up some goblin green with the uriel yellow and just glaze that on some of the upward facing areas of the model. Then using that mixture, I highlight some of the pretty little green engravings and then did a little bit of an edge highlight all around the chassis and to a few other little spots that needed it. 
So that's the Anvil of Doom all done. I did glue it together straight away because I couldn't wait to see what it looked like. I wasn't gonna wait to the end till I finished painting the other minis, so I just went straight to it. And now it's time to paint some short, chubby bearded boys. I'm gonna be honest with you, I hated painting that anvil, so I was really keen to paint something else. I decided to give these guys the batch painting treatment and knock it all over pretty fast. Now with these dwarfs, I'm gonna try some different colors for the skin tones. Put down Cadian Flesh as the base, then do a wash of Gulliman Flesh. I want the skin to have that nice reddish Cadian Flesh tone, so I mixed in a small amount of Flayed One Flesh, as this has a little bit more of a yellow look to it. After this, I did the eyes of dried bark, some white, and then just another dot of dried bark in the middle, being super careful. So just an FYI, I used some techniques for these dwarves which I have gone into more detail with in previous videos. So if this is your first time on my channel, it's probably time to get up to date and take a look at some of my previous videos. I gave the Rune Priest a cold beard and put down some Fenris Grey and mixed in Ulthuan Grey to slowly build up the highlights. If you want to see this technique in more detail, I suggest you go check out my Celestial Wizard video. Once I was finished with the Rune Priest, I then painted the Guardian's beard with Xandri Dust and Abaddon Black and I decided to tackle these beards a bit later. So I'm just gonna stop right here and this is where I kind of put down the minis and had a bit of a break for a few days. Fatigue really started to set in and I think it's important not to push yourself so far that burnout sets in. And with this one, I was meant to get this out last week for you guys, but I decided to have a week off. My goal with this channel is to paint as many crazy, fun, Warhammer Fantasy minis and even 40K minis for you guys from the past. And Sometimes you just need to take a break. So I'm sorry if you didn't get your Anvil of Doom fixed last week. I apologize, I did need a little bit of a break. When work sets in and life and you know, all these things, it's a bit hard to make these videos constantly week by week, but I'm gonna try my best for you guys. So fingers crossed the algorithm doesn't throw me out the window, so make sure you please like and subscribe. Anyway, that's my sob story over, let's get back into it. Time for some base coats. I used a couple coats of dark green for the dwarf's cloth and then applied some dried bark to anywhere I wanted dark leather. Then, I threw on some corn red to the leathers of the weapons. I put on some Lotham blue to the Rune Priest's little orb on his staff. A couple coats of Carrick Stone to the inside of the cape. And then some Xandri Dust to the outside of the cape. Just going over all these little fairy parts. For the cape highlights, I did some wet blending and adding in small amounts of bone white to the Xandri Dust. And I applied this to the raised areas and just the edges of the cape. Okay, so time for some metallics, and I always find it's a good idea to do these last because then you don't have to wash your water out. I'm lazy. So just like the anvil, I'm going to use the same colours and put down a couple thin coats of gunmetal to the helmets, hammers, and the chainmail. Then when I'm happy with that, I'll apply Gianna's gold to the armor's little runes, the fancy little belt details, and anywhere else I really want gold. I then reached for the nun oil and went over the gunmetal, the dark green, the corn red, and the dried bark. I was really careful not to get it on the skin and the gold. I don't really do this often, but I felt like these guys really needed some dark lines in the recesses. Just like the anvil, I then applied a couple coats of washed down gullman flesh all over the gold parts. And then to wrap up the washes, I used Agrax Earthshade just on the outside of the cape. Now it's time for some highlights and let's wrap this up fast because I know you guys want to see the end product. On the leathers for the weapons, I went back over with corn red, then mixed in some Evil Suns to build up a nice rich red highlight. I then mixed in a little more Evil Suns and highlighted a smaller area, then added a drop of Wild Rider Red to the mix and glazed that to the top of the weapon just to emulate some light coming from the top. For the green cloth, I made a mix of 50% dark green and 50% Warboss green and applied this all over. Then I mixed in some more Warboss green and covered it to a smaller area. For the final highlight, I decided to throw some moot green in the mix and just do the edges. Nothing too fancy and I feel like it does the job pretty well. Next up is the true metallic metal and I follow the same techniques as I did for the anvil so I won't dive too deep into this. I just went back over with gun metal to all the raised areas and then gave the chain mail a sort of dry brush method just with my brush. What I did here was I kind of wiped away the excess paint and then just went over it lightly and then just built it up until it was pretty shiny. Then it was time for a silver highlight to all the raised areas and I applied that just to a smaller area. Same thing with the golds, I just applied Gianna's gold and tried not to get it in the recesses. Then I went over this with polished gold to all the raised areas and finished up with a nice silver highlight. For 
For the Room Priest orb, I went over with a wash of Ultramine Blue, then a coat of Lothen Blue, and mixed in a little bit of Blue Horror and applied that to the top half of the orb, just to make it look like it had some shine. I then added a pinstripe of pure Blue Horror just around the top to finish the look. This just makes it look like it has a little bit of reflection of light around it. I gave the cape a good brush of Xandri Dust to the raised areas, and then mixed in a tiny bit of Bone White and just added this to the edges and places where I thought light would be catching. On the inside of the cape, I made a mix of Carrick Stone and Bone White and slowly added in more and more Bone White and built that up for a highlight. Time for a quick freehand and using dried bark, I carefully added a little zigzag pattern to the bottom of the cape. Nothing crazy, just really simple way of doing it and I thought it'd be fun. I didn't really base this off anything. I thought it kind of looked a bit dwarfish, so I just did that. Once this was all done, I decided it was time to jump on the beards again. And as I said before, you can go check out some of my previous videos to see how I do beards. Now for the gems, and I put some white paint over these areas first. Then I went over with Evil Sun Scarlet as the base. I then watered down some black and just glazed it to the top right of the gem. Once I was happy with that, I used some Troll Slayer Orange for the bottom left a small highlight of orange flare and once that was done I just did a pure white dot up the top right hand corner. And that's pretty much it, after this I just do some goblin green on the base of the guardians and here it is, an anvil of doom by anvil of doom. Thanks so much for sticking around guys, and if you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. It's my goal here in Anvil of Doom Miniatures to paint as many Warhammer Fantasy and 40k classic minis as I possibly can, and I've got a pretty long journey ahead of me. So thanks so much for the support, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.